Welcome to the Sheer Business Inspiration Podcast. Here you'll find conversations with business leaders, thought leaders, inspiring individuals who make a real difference. We hope you enjoy. Hi and welcome to episode 6 of the Sheer Business Inspiration Podcast. I'm Jo Faraday and in this episode I'm going to be chatting to Mike McCallowitz. Now for those of you that don't know Mike, he is an international best-selling author, he's a brilliant keynote speaker, he's a founder of Obsidian Launch, Profit First Professionals and co-founder of Prevendus Group. In this episode we'll be chatting about what started him on his entrepreneurial support journey and also some some hard hitting facts about what pitfalls you may need to consider when you are starting off your own business and pitfalls that he fell into. So um, really look forward to sharing this episode with you and hearing your thoughts and feedback on it. Thanks a lot. Check that out. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you. Thank you. Putting on an event is nothing short of difficult. Actually, some people would consider it impossible. You have to have a remarkable event. You have to draw in and pack the house. You have to fill those seats. You have to have people raving about the experience, people that are thrilled to be there, that learn, that walk away with something tangible. That's hard. And it's contingent upon the presenters. You can put on a tremendous amount of effort of having a wonderful stage, an amazing venue, but if the speakers are flat, so's the event. My name is Mike Michalowicz. I'm the author of multiple books, including Profit First and Clockwork, and I am on a mission to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty. I was the makeover specialist for MSNBC. I was a former columnist for the Wall Street Journal. All of those elements together draw an audience because it's a name they've heard of. It's someone's face they've seen before. Now that person's in front of them, delivering an impactful presentation that'll change their lives forever. I've been professionally trained in the art of performance. And that's something that's extremely important. A speaker is someone that sits behind a lectern or has PowerPoint slides and goes through a routine. A performance is equivalent of a one-person play. It's where you educate the audience, where you entertain them. It's where they're laughing, it's where they're crying, it's where they're learning throughout. My goal is that your audience walks away, blown away. I will deliver a remarkable experience. We will work collectively to make sure we achieve the outcomes that you want for your event. I give actual tools. I act out the scenes and the elements. I'll have people relating. And as a result, they will find the presentation to be nothing short of remarkable. They'll come to you, the person who coordinated it, and thank you no end. That is my goal. You will have an empowered audience. What does that mean? It means the audience will leave my presentation with specific actionable tasks that they can take that will drive results in their business, literally by the end of the presentation. I also customize what I do. A presentation needs to speak not just about the concept, it needs to speak to the audience. I wanna know who your audience is. I want to learn what will make it remarkable for them. And with your permission, I want to speak with some of them so I can get an essence for what they want. With that, I can customize a presentation that will truly be beyond remarkable. It'll be relatable. And that's the key that I'm going to bring to your audience. Entrepreneurs struggle in developing their businesses. They need simple tools. And while my books have been wildly successful, I know this. A book takes weeks to consume, but a speech? In 45 minutes, you can change someone's life. When I go on stage, I know I have an ultimate opportunity to be of the greatest service. I put my soul into this. My commitment is to be the number one speaker, not for the event, but for the entirety of the life of the people I intended. I wanna be their number one experience ever. That's my commitment, to deliver at that level. That's my promise to you. I am delighted to welcome today's Sheer Business Inspiration podcast, Mike McCallowich. 
thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Joe, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Before we get into the nitty gritty, um, please can you share with the audience a little bit about yourself um, and, and you know, your background and what makes you tick? Sure, sure. So uh, I, I've been an entrepreneur my entire adult life, ever since university. Uh, I, I've run businesses. I've had the good fortune of, of building and selling some businesses. I've had the, the bad fortune of building a company that was a disaster. It, it, it wiped me out financially, just wiped me out totally. But it's interesting, it was in that moment when I, I lost everything and had to restart that I, I committed to being an author. I remember journaling and writing for over a year and a half on everything I didn't know about entrepreneurship and endeavored to find the solutions. And uh, now for the last 12 years or 13 years, I've been a full-time author. I write small business books. Uh, honestly, I'm fixing everything in that journal. I got about 30 more books I got to write to get Oh, it wow, done. okay. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I've written, but you can see I have it up there. Uh, Your book my tree, wall. yeah, books. that's really cool. Okay. Yeah, and I, I'm on a mission uh, to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty, meaning so many entrepreneurs, myself included, start a business with this big vision to, to make money, to not worry about bills, to have personal freedom to do what we want, when we want, but it doesn't come true. We are actually impoverished. It might, my goal is to close that gap to make entrepreneurs wildly successful. Well, it's, I mean, it's a great journey. And um, me personally, I've read a number of your books. So, you know, I really, you know, um, I, I, I do a lot of running. So I listen to it all audible. And, That's great. Um, yeah. So, so um, I've, I've listened to a number of them and there's been so many aha moments for me. And, and you know, I would encourage everyone to sort of to listen to the ones that, that are relative to, to the, their part of their journey because they're, they're all quite different in, in their own way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, as you say, you, you've written some fantastic books. Um, so the starting point of your journey, would you say that was when things didn't go as you'd planned them to go? Is that sort of where you started? Yeah, when, when I first became an entrepreneur, I was in the tech space doing technical services and so forth. And um, I'll tell you, in the beginning of business, it was very fear-driven. I found fear actually was a great ally for a period of time. I wasn't making money. I had mouths to feed. I was married and had children and had to make this work, right, you know, from day one and uh, was afraid not to. And I always just got by by struggling and struggling. I found fear, well, that gets you way early up in the morning, you know, five in the morning, and it has you working until five o'clock the next morning. At a certain point, it becomes exhausting and overwhelming and stress. Yeah, yeah and burnout um, and all of those horrible things. And burnout, and burnout, yeah. 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 So I needed to find solutions and systems. As I ran my businesses, I found a few here and a few there. My businesses got better. But it was actually on this third business when I, I thought I had everything figured out because I'd grown some businesses, I sold them. I thought I knew everything was when I, I, I wiped myself out. That was, the, to me, a, a really a, a wake-up call, a realization that I didn't understand fundamental pieces of business. I think the greatest discovery I've had for myself is that the entrepreneurial journey is much simpler than I was making it out to be. I was making it complex. I thought it was about hustle and grind, and it's not. Yeah. It's not. It's about simple systems and simple processes. It's about having a vision and organizing other people and resources and technology to make that vision a reality. Once I started to understand that, that's when everything changed. Uh, yeah. yeah, there was a real um, shift in pattern. Um, and, and as I say, you, you do talk openly in your books about business failure. Um, and obviously, you know, yeah. people aren't gonna get it right first time necessarily. And um, there's gonna be a lot of obstacles. There's gonna be a lot of stumbling blocks. Um, so, I mean, obviously it's important that people learn from these situations instead of fearing the failure that, that might, they might come up against. Um, so what would be your message to any budding entrepreneur at this time? Because let's face it, at the moment, there are, there's a lot of people starting out completely fresh because of the current situation, yeah, which is encouraging, sure. but equally, they may not have any knowledge or experience as to how to run a business. So what message would you give to them? I think there's two elements. Um, first is purpose, I think, is, is massively important. What's the greater reason why we're doing this? You know, we're all doing this to make money and to experience freedom. But 
what's the greater reason? Is it to serve your family? Is it to serve your community? Is it to, to do something greater? When I got that clarity to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty, that little sign I showed you, it is so clear to me that I need to be of service to other entrepreneurs, that that purpose has been a relentless drive. I can, I can go on forever about a subject because I love it so much and it means so much to me. That drive brings about tenacity and tenacity brings about success. Mm -hmm. The second thing though is failure itself. Expect it. I'm not going to say it's enjoyable, but expect failure and learn from the failure. Meaning failure is a way not to do things, but failure is not a point to give up. I think some people experience failure and they say, well, clearly this isn't working. No, it's just not working that way. We need to try a new iteration or a new version of it. Yeah. So expect failure, leverage failure and use it to your advantage and use it to make that purpose become a reality. That I, so I'm sure a lot of people are nodding their heads as well. Um, yeah. Let's face it, this year has not been a year that anyone would have planned for at all. Oh. Doesn't matter what, what, what anyone says. Um, but there's, there's a lot of people out there that are maybe losing hope. Um, and resilience is, is something that a lot of people are having to really dig deep and try and, and get you know, a handle on. And um, what does resilience mean to you? Yeah, so resilience means that I put more significance in the outcome, the purpose I'm achieving, than the perception of others. You know, the perception of others is uh, if I fail, well, what are people going to think of me? And uh, clearly they're going to think I'm less than. If I'm more influenced by what I believe others feel about me, I am guaranteed not to take on the risk. But if I'm more concerned with serving the purpose, then the criticisms that may come about, even the self-criticisms that always come about for entrepreneurs, yeah. they, can be, they can be blown by as long as you have purpose. So that's where resilience comes from. It's putting more significance on the impact you're having for others than the perceptions others have of you. Yeah, no, that's, and that's a great piece of advice, definitely. Um, so what motivates you, Mike? I mean, I think I know what the answer is, but, you know, what, what, what makes you tick? Well, I, I remember, well, it, it's eradicating entrepreneurial poverty, but I remember yeah. the moment it was my daughter. You know, I, I had grown a couple of multimillion dollar businesses and, and sold them. And I thought I was, you know, God's gift to entrepreneurship. I had the Midas touch. I had this huge ego and didn't even realize it. My third business, I was an angel investor. And you know, I was investing in all these different businesses and giving them direction. Because ultimately I thought, I'm a genius. I'm here, I can help you grow. Um, but I was not a genius. I was not an angel investor. I was the angel of death. Every business oh, no. I touched was dying. <laughs> was dying. Oh dear. I lost everything. Joe, I lost my, my home, oh. my cars, all my possessions, um, just to sustain. The one thing I didn't lose was my family. I remember meeting with my wife and children. And I was sobbing, telling them what a disaster I brought upon us. And my daughter was, uh, she was nine years old at the time. And she went running out of the room as I was saying this. I thought she was running away from me because the provider, the person who does themselves as the provider, us, the entrepreneur. Yeah. Had but she came running back. She was running away. She came running back with a piggy bank in oh, her hand. No. And she put it on the table. I'll never oh. forget this. And she goes, she goes, daddy, daddy, since, since you can't provide for us, I'll be the provider for our oh, family. Oh my goodness, me. Oh, and, um, oh that would have broke my heart. Oh. oh, it did break my heart. Yeah. And, uh, that will be, that's my, I know when I leave our planet, when I pass, my final thought will be about that moment. I just know it. Oh. And um, it woke me up to the fact that uh, I need to be bigger than my failures, that I need to find solutions. And the solutions are in simplicity not in complexity. I thought business had to have thousands and millions of moving parts that had to be complex, that there had to be all these elements. And my mind shifted that day is, is that entrepreneurship can continue to be simplified more and more. It drove me to become an author that day was the trigger for me to become an author. And every book I write is to simplify different parts of the entrepreneurial journey. 
And that's, I mean, do you know, that, uh, there's, and that's like you say, it's your purpose and your reason and your whole, um, you know, your whole, whole journey really started there. And, right. you know, you embrace that, but, but what, how difficult and, and tough that would have been. And, and we've touched upon, you know, it, it's a difficult time. There's a lot of people at the moment yeah. not, not knowing actually what on earth can happen is going to happen um you know businesses you know going you know into administration people being mass mass redundancies everywhere um, as yeah. well as the health aspect um can you offer our, our listeners any sort of inspiring positive message that will help them try and and pull themselves away from what they can't control and you know sure sure so you know 2008 was the last time we've gone through an experience like this, and, and we called that the Global Great Recession. I, I want to start off by renaming 2020. 2020 is not another Great Recession. Mm. I think we have the right, as small business owners, to call 2020 the Great Reinvention, yeah. and which means is we have great opportunity in front of us. The customer's needs have changed, and they will forever be changed. Yeah. Their expectations are different. Go to any restaurant and see the expectations that you have of how that restaurant treats you. Try to travel anywhere and see the travel experiences and what your expectations are for protection. Well, with the change in expectations means there's an opportunity for us as businesses to serve the new expectation. Yeah. Well, what we simply have to do is ask. Ask your clients or your new prospects if you're a new business, ask them, What's the new way can serve you? What are your expectations? What would make you feel safe and comfortable and happy and satisfied in this new environment? The funny thing is the customer knows how they want to be served. Yeah. And most businesses, especially the established businesses, just continue to trudge along the way they were always trudging along. Mm. Some customers today are still working with those old businesses, not because they want to, but because that's the only choice that's out there. They're waiting for the new selection, the new choice the better provider. That's what I see in 2020. So I'm actually as scary as it is now. And it, it's a shit storm. It's yes, scary. it is. Let's be it's, honest. But, yeah. but equally, no yeah, but there are positive measures that are- But there's positive measures. Yeah. So I, I, I want us to see that. The majority of stuff that's going on is, is gross and horrible. Yeah. But in there is opportunity. The best thing is us as small businesses have the best opportunity to change. Consider a tsunami wave, one of those massive waves coming through the ocean. That's what this is. It's yeah. a massive change that's coming on. The big established companies, the Ubers or the Airbnbs or the Googles or the Amazon, they're on tanker ships. They can't change and catch this wave. They're just trying to position themselves to roll over it, yeah. but they can't change. The small businesses, me and you, yeah. we're on little jet skis. We can zigzag as quickly as we want to. And if we can do that and change, we can catch the wave of demand that's coming and shifting. Yeah. So this is an opportunity for us to change. And it all starts by simply asking our clients and continue to ask, yeah. how's the new way we can serve you? Yeah, keep that conversation going and keep asking all the right questions, so definitely. Important. Yeah, it really is. It's really important. So what's coming up next for you, Mike? What's, what, what, have you got any new books you can tell it us is. about? Or what, what's, what's been going on in your world so far? Shocker of shocks, <laughs> I have a new book I'm working on. Now. So I, I just okay. released Fix This Next. I, you can see I have a position right there. Yeah. That just came out um, about four or five months ago, but I've already started writing a new book. And I'm exploring marketing. The, the challenge is many, most marketing seems to be only moderately effective or, or not effective. I don't know if you or anyone listening is running you know, Facebook ads or LinkedIn or whatever. My, my question is why isn't it wildly successful? And so that's the challenge I've been observing. And, and I've been studying what makes marketing wildly effective for the last 10 years. And, and I, I found it. Um, it plays into how the brain operates. The brain triggers on certain elements. There's actually three elements that are critical. So in this new book, I'm documenting the three elements that gets the consumer mind to absolutely pay attention, to absolutely be attracted, and to absolutely take action. So that's what my new book is about. And it's coming out in 2021. Brilliant. Great. Well, that's definitely something to look forward to without a shadow of a doubt. So, um, you know, thank you so much for, for being a great guest. And um, 
you know, from our, from our perspective, it, it's important to spread the positivity. Um, yeah. You know, our businesses have, have all been affected in some way and this year. But like you say, it's important to be positive and keep pushing on and, um, and doing good things. So thanks for being a brilliant guest, Mike. Oh, this has been an absolute joy. Thanks for <laughs> thanks having Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you so much, Mike, for taking the time to speak with us in this episode. We know that everybody will really have taken some really great positive messages um, from our conversation. So thanks again for sharing your time. And we will be sharing um, all of the information where people can find you, what you're up to, and of course, the links to your brilliant books. So thanks once more. If you're enjoying the Sheer Business Inspiration podcast, we'd love you to connect with us. So please do feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel where all of these vlogs will be shared and you can visually see all of the guests that we have on. Please do also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and LinkedIn and we would love to hear your thoughts and views and any ideas of what you would like to come up um, in the future. Our next episode, which is episode seven, we will be chatting to Pete Markey, who is the Chief Marketing Officer for TSB Bank. He's an award-winning marketeer and can't wait to um, share his conversation with you. So um, please do feel free. If there are any questions for him, we can relay them back, but um, we will be sharing his chat with you very soon. Thanks for listening.